you said something really important that most people don't know what branding is. Right. So what is the difference between type and brand? Si agara, camina, está estamulada. Camina, ay mamita, camina, anda. Camina, sale un poquito para acá. Welcome to Common Sense Mamita. I'm Lydia Nicole, and if you are interested in acting tips, showbiz insight, or any life lessons, you've come to the right place. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get all the information as it comes out in real time. Today, I am so excited to have at my table an amazing man who is not only an actor, photographer, but he is also someone who helps other actors figure out their branding, which is so important. Please help me welcome Mark Atterbury. Yay, Mark, Yay. how are you? I'm good. It's how been a you? long time. I know, I know, it's been a long time. How did you get started, first of all, as an actor? I mean, I jokingly like to say that I kind of fell into acting because I never really meant to do this. I grew up in a dairy with thousands of cows. We had a massive hay barn, so we used to take and put the hay bales into big theaters theater space. Oh, wow. And then we put on like pirate shows and all kinds of, jump from hay bale to hay bale. So I think the seed was planted there, but I was actually a musician. Oh, and okay. So, That's yeah. how you started in the business? It is. Okay. And that, that was all my desire. I just wanted to be a musician. So I did, I did very well with that. I toured with a lot of pretty well-known people and was a keyboard player, was a trombone player first. So, and then I toured like tour after tour after tour mm -hmm. and burnt out on all that stuff. Wow. So I thought, I really want to do something different. The bug of acting started to hit me. Then I met some key people, River Phoenix and a few others that were great at helping me make some contacts and getting that started. Mm -hmm. And then I fell in love. So, and I quit entirely in 1994 music. And did you take classes when you went into I did. acting? I did. I took, I took from anybody that I thought was great. Because I, I figured music, it's so technically demanding. Mm -hmm. So I studied like crazy as a musician. So I figured I'd need to do that as an actor. So I studied with everybody who was well-known. or. So or, who did you get, give me a couple of names? Um, Stella Adler, Roy London, Howard Fine, uh, Ivana Chubbuck, Larry Moss. I mean, all the big names. What did you get from Ivana when you studied with well, her? Well, Ivana was, it was an interesting time because Roy London had died mm -hmm. and the studio was taken over by... Ivana. Roy was probably the best teacher I've ever studied with in my life. And he was <laughs> he was so affirming in terms of kind of the stuff that I teach now mm -hmm. of just like, who are you and what are you going to bring to this? Yeah, do your homework or everything else, but what are these things about you that's unique? And the way he taught was different with every single person. Right. So going to Ivana's, there was this buzz about let's keep that spirit of artistry alive. And so everybody was involved in this class. A lot of celebrities and stuff mm -hmm. went to master class. And it was more about, I think, the spirit of that that made me so passionate about acting. And everyone, I think all of us. And what did you get from Stella Adler? Stella was good because my imagination was vivid as a kid, and Stella really gets into that. So it enhanced that, and that's the first time I actually figured out, oh, script breakdown's important. So that's kind of what I got from her. And what did you get from Howard Fine? Howard, Howard, I only studied for briefly. Howard actually helped me with my directorial sense. Oh, okay. In terms of seeing something from a directorial standpoint. And then Larry Moss was more, uh, Larry's so passionate about the yes, art. So that made me even more passionate. He's kind of had that Roy thing. He's, the, he's the good Roy. He's, <laughs> he's the good Roy, because Roy could be mean sometimes. Although but, he's never mean to be. So. But he could, he, I, I, I love all the teachers that you spoke of. I've, yeah. I, other than, w with the exception of Howard Fine, I've, I've studied with all of them. Roy, I studied with the longest, nine years. I was with Did Roy you? for nine years. Did you years. really? He wow. was my man. In New York? Here. No, Roy started out here. We started in New York. No, as a, as a teacher, he started here. And then Ivana, she was coaching him. She got him to start teaching. She did get him to start teaching. Yes. Yeah. And but it was out here at his house. Right. It was And at his so house here. I was I started at his house. Wow. And wow. then we moved to Larch Mountain yeah. and and I would beg to be a you know, it was big for me to be his monitor. Yeah. I needed yeah. to be his monitor. <laughs> and he That's would great. not let any girls be his monitor. Yeah. And then he had a girl be his monitor. I was so mad. I was like, yeah. I wanted to be the monitor. So yeah. finally, in my eighth year of working with him, I got to be his monitor. Is that right? But Roy was the most amazing, he, he did what you teach. He taught you to be the best you. You know, I, I don't know if you remember, but he would always say, stop trying to be the salad. Just be the carrot or, or pick a vegetable, be that vegetable. And then they're going to want that vegetable all kinds of yeah. ways. But you got to be that vegetable. That's right. and, and But sometimes he could be mean. Whereas Larry Moss, passionate, loves actors, wants the best for you. 
and just light, just yeah, just yeah. bringing light. So mm -hmm. I just, you know, that That's was just true. my... And I love it. Actually, I didn't say, too, the one thing I loved about Ivana is Ivana was all about winning. Yes. And actually, that was a word I needed to hear because I was one of these people that were like, I'm going to I'm gonna Meryl Streep this or, or Daniel Day-Lewis this and become, you know, this total character. But I'd forget that winning is very entertaining. She's the one that reminded me of like, oh, no, 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 no. We want to watch you win this scene. Yes. And Roy so, did that too. He I mean, did that do was that his, as well. But yeah. she, yes, yes, yeah. you are right. That's her top her thing. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Exactly. So then you took all these classes. You started acting. And when did you pick up the camera and decide you were going to take Shortly pictures? Shortly after that, because what happened was, obviously I want to do TV and film. And I'm, I'm, I've watched films since I was born. So film is my thing. I love films. And so that was what I wanted to do. But I didn't get opportunities. I was very, very, very frustrated. And so I did a ton of commercials, I did a ton of some voiceovers, and but I just was not getting a lot of stuff. Some indies. And so out of frustration, I decided to take a break. Because I've been going since literally six, I mean, playing mm. music. And so nonstop, just, I took a total break from life, relaxed, decided to shoot pictures for a while, shot some actors headshots, and who knew that that was going to take off. I have an uncle that's an amazing photographer, so he'd had me going since I was a kid. So that just snowballed. And then with literally within a year of me going, all right, I'll shoot headshots for a while, um, I became LA's number one. Yes, you were. Voted. Yeah. Yes, you were. For the longest time, I had your sheet, your, your card. There were three photographers on my list, and you were the top one. It took me probably five years to get to you yeah. to have you shoot and you were like I'm not really doing much anymore I was like please can you please do my picture please please I um, know I know and you were so kind as a photographer and and so caring with the actor that it, it really helped I, I loved it it, it was a, a wonderful experience okay. for me because sometimes Good. shooting headshots as an actor it's torturous to begin with and then if you yeah. have a photographer who's not really giving you stuff yeah. It can be like like heartbreaking. It is. Well, I'll tell you, the reason I think I was good is, it was back in the black and white days when I started, is I was good at black and white because my uncle was, Ansel Adams is a guy that trained him. Mm -hmm. So black and white is how I was raised. So that was comfortable. But every photographer I shot with, I was like miserably uncomfortable. You know, it's just like drop your chin, tilt, yes. good. Hold that, don't move, don't yes. move. Give me a little smile, more smile, less smile. Like, I don't know what I'm thinking. And it just made sense to like, well, if I just shot people spontaneously, gave them lines and like directed them through, and, and then that exploded. Yeah. And, and I will say I this seeing, other thing you just you just brought back a memory was that you had me do Roy's technique. Who are you thinking of? What do you want in this in this shot? Yeah, and that yeah. was fantastic. So well, I just that's what these actors to, need. I mean, yes, you, yes, they want yes, to connect yes, to yes, the yes, camera yes, and yes, have, and that's yes, what makes a great headshot. Yes. Because if you look through breakdowns, it's like dead, 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 and all the eyes. Mm -hmm. Because people have nothing going on when they're thinking about this this you know <laughs> but you connect them you have something and then they're passionately embracing you know hey i'm your sister tell me that line you want to tell me yes. and so that it just engages the person and draws them into the camera lens what are three tips you can give actors who are going to go get their headshots so that they don't make horrible well, mistakes a couple of things i think are really 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 important number one meet the photographer i, I don't know what's going on with now but nobody meets photographers anymore and I know photographers are like, oh, I don't meet with people. So it's going both ways. But if you're not comfortable with the photographer, you're not going to be comfortable showing your personality. I mean, I, I would say, you know, in class, it's like headshots are about what's your look, what's your personality, could you act? If those three things are out there, it's a crappy shot. What's your look is, what types are you, how are you going to cast, what's great about you in terms of an actor being cast. Personality, if your personality is not coming through, you have nothing. And then can you act? Is that connecting to the camera and having something going on beyond the eyes? So... If those aren't there, you have nothing. And if you have a miserable photographer that you're not comfortable with, that makes you uncomfortable, there's no chance of getting good shots. The second thing I would say is I love giving dialogue to actors. So I encourage people to take dialogue. I mean, I always like to think acting to me is like, I act the best when I'm with my best friend. Because sometimes, you know, we're, we're doing stupid stuff like sliding <laughs> in the playground on slides. Or other times it's like, I need to confront you. I love you, but you know, you, you, you've got to hear me in these things. You hurt me when you do this. And I can actually have that conversation in my head. So I say take dialogue in. So give yourself the characters you would play. Take dialogue in that means something to you that's personal. And that will make all the difference in the world. And give it to the camera. Give it to the camera. Mm -hmm. Or try to the photographer, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you obviously can't talk. To right, right. But, but, the, but the emotion yeah. while he's shooting, you give it to him. Yeah. And then the last thing I would say is literally screw around. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how else to say it, but every headshot session I did shooting people, always the best ones were the ones where people just came ready to have a great time and screw around. Mm -hmm. That's why the best people to shoot were always brand new in town because they were like excited and they were like I'm in LA and I'm shooting with LA's number one headshot photographer 
yeah, and it's like all that energy just comes through. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They didn't expect anything. They didn't know what to do. They mm -hmm. just had a great time. How did you get into teaching branding to actors? Because it's really necessary. Two things made a difference. Um, because I was doing headshots and because of the success, and I started doing the big agencies and the celebrities, I felt the need to talk about it. I felt the need to talk about you know how to get a good, good headshot, all that kind of stuff. I did have some success after that. I started doing a lot of celebrities' magazine ads and magazine spreads, and then I started doing their commercial stuff, and then I directed some commercials. And being on that side changed everything I thought about an actor. And I thought, no one, including these great teachers, really does deal with the other side of the camera and what really does get people cast. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to focus people, and it's really just us. Mm -hmm. You. Mm -hmm. No one tells me that. Everyone tells me i got to become this character, but no, it's the great qualities about me. So I felt the need to do that. I owned an ad agency during that period. Oh, I bought wow. into an ad agency, and so I learned a ton about marketing. And that's why I felt, oh, I need to talk about this stuff. I need to talk. Because people throw around the word branding, and they have no idea what it means. They think, oh, I'll just portray myself as this. It's like, well, if that's not you, you can't brand yourself. Branding is what people say about you. So it's just, all right, let's 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 see what people say about you. Mm -hmm. and let's figure out what to do with it. So let's break down branding, because you said something really important, that most people don't know what branding is. Right. So what is the difference between type and brand? Well, type is as simple as it's the categories you fit in. It's, it's really that simple. So how does the industry see you in terms of what types you're going to play? What roles? really is, is kind of what it is. So that's as far as that goes. So like a police officer, a nurse, a exactly. doctor. Uh, or okay. I even like more general categories because that's how okay. the agency is. So it would be like a business professional or just oh, okay. a, a Midwest kind of guy or a sweet girl, girl next door, best friend. I mean, so it's a little bit more general than just a specific like he's a cop. That's what type is. And then branding, because I actually like the word niche. That's the word I focus on but branding in the business world in the marketing world is how we're going to brand you in other words we want to make you the go-to company for this but the problem is and why I say people don't know what it is is people again think they need to create a brand and go okay I'm gonna sit down and what do I really want to do I, I mean I want to be James Bond that's what I really want to do but I'm not James Bond you know I'm probably the killer that's gonna <laughs> get killed by James Bond but I'm not the James Bond, so right. no matter how hard I try to brand myself as that, I worked with an actor for a long time that was like, I'm in the next Han Solo. It's like, you're actually not the next Han Solo at all. But he was so convinced of it. He branded himself. He bought expensive flyers that showed it and made film. It's a waste of money. So that's why I think people don't understand brand. Brand is simply asking the public what they see when they how see How they perceive you, you not yep. how you perceive yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's beyond just the type, because the roles are part of branding, but it, it is more specific. It's what is what do you see when you see me, personality-wise, specifics in terms of physical appearances, mm -hmm. and even spirit, who soul, who I am. I mean, who do you see who I am? Yeah, too? I like that niche word. Yeah, and that's your, what niche, your niche is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, or niche. That's what you want to do, is create the niche. You want to be the go-to person for the girl next door who comes from a small town that's got some sensibilities, but man, she's got an edge. I mean, you can start to describe mm -hmm. it pretty specifically and become the go-to. And we can think of all the great actors. Well, well there's, as you're saying that, I, I have two examples of someone who went from a type mm -hmm. to a niche. Uh, Sharon Stone. Sharon, Sharon absolutely. Stone went from the girl next door, the young ingenue, to being the badass. Yeah. And it was all because of Roy. It was I just bad. thought I'd, I thought I'd throw that in there. Oh, that little Roy fish in. It's true, though. But, that, true. but she really yeah. did that. I mean, the, she's a great example of somebody who worked all the time but was not uh, memorable. Right. You know, like she got cast all the time yeah. as that girl. Yeah. But you couldn't remember, oh, she was in that movie. But yeah. then something shifted. And then she took off, and it was about Sharon Stone. Well, remember she said at the Golden Globes when she got the award, she said, you know, I'm a 10-year, I'm an overnight success 10 years in the making. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes. That is, and it, it says that's true because that's how the business works. It's true because it takes her talent that long to really get recognized. But it's also true because she did have to eventually find, oh, there you go. And I, I mean, there's a ton of examples of those kind of things. Yeah, and find yourself. And I think that's important for actors. Yeah. It's like you may start off one place, but then as you find yourself and you develop and you know what your, your special sauce right. is, Right. then you can create that niche. Of, well, it's interesting because 
a handful of people just get it. They just understand. And it's that whole be yourself thing. They just go, well, I am myself and I don't care what people think. So I'm going to be myself. There's something to be said about that that just does work. It's like mm-hmm. Helen Mirren's never had acting classes in her mm-hmm. life. She got into the Royal Shakespeare Company, which you would think would require tremendous technique just by going and going, well, this is this is what I do. You know, so can you use this? And they're like, yes, we can use that. Or Jennifer Lawrence has never had uh, acting classes. River Phoenix, Joaquin Phoenix, never. So that those guys just had that natural niche. They had that. I don't have filters. I'm totally comfortable being myself. I don't care about the lines, and I'm not care. You know, and they do. It. I'm one of these people that needs technique to get there. I don't have that natural inclination. Mm-hmm. So I, I had to study with the people I did. How do you use? Having been a photographer, teaching actors branding and their niche, how do you use that for you, Mark, the actor? Well, it's mind-blowingly different now that I do use it because there was a reason I wasn't booking theatrically. Again, I was so frustrated because I felt really good at technique. I was literally uh, studying five days a week, you know, uh, for a good period of time just to really nail this thing down. So I was like, why am I not getting cast? I'm doing everything technically perfect. But what I learned to go into the other side of the camera is it's me. It's me they really want. They really want my personality, not me trying to be a different character. They want my personality. It's funny with people like Roy and Larry, who really hit that over the head. It's just like, how could I miss that? Once I started getting to the other side of the camera and telling people to do that, and now it's like auditioning. It's just like, I literally feel guilty because I feel like I don't do anything when I audition. And yet I work 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 all all the time. time. So it's like... (laughs) wait I worked hard before and I never worked that's what made the biggest change for me it freed me up to go hey you know what by the way teaching type and branding and particularly niche you can't do anything about it that's just how you are you can't change how people perceive you no matter how hard you try but you can embrace it you can embrace it yeah exactly so and that's what it was it was like I know all this stuff now all I have to do is actually just do it well also you you just said something that it it reminds me what all the young actors do uh, coming out of the gate we do everything I can do that role I can do that role well I can do that role and the thing for young actors is to go no you can't do that role you're not going to get hired for Shakespeare to play Othello when they got a Othello guy right over yeah, there, yeah. you you might have done it in college, yeah. neighborhood production, but you're not going to do it in Hollywood. Yeah, no, it's so very it's true. So it's understanding what it is you sell, your special sauce, right, your right. niche, yeah. and then bringing it all the way. Like Vin Diesel, great example of someone who knew what he sold, took fifty thousand dollars back when there was no um, no computers, no uh, smartphones. Yeah. And he saved his money, did this little 10 minute short of him going on auditions, different auditions, playing a, an Italian, a hip hopper, a black guy. He said, Hollywood, this is how you can buy me. Steven Spielberg saw it, the rest is history. Well, think about Jim Carrey. He- I mean, Jim Carrey came around at the time we had the films of the A's, which were kind of heavy and, and romantic and large and emotional and all that stuff, and very real. And we come into the 90s, there was no one doing comedy at that. And he's like, look, this is what I do, you know? Right, but he too started as a type and then found his niche because... But he always embraced it. I mean, no oh, one... Oh, yeah, but they didn't embrace out. him first, but he but he was general. Uh, he got cast as a general, you know, and white he, guy. Never, yeah. and, and it wasn't until In Living Color that people saw his zaniness. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Yes. He finally gave himself yes. to be permission to go, you know what, no one's doing this kind of crazy over-the-top stuff. No one's... It's not in any films. It's not in any TV shows. I'm going to do it anyway because it's him. Can you change your niche? Like, let's say you started off as an ingenue, young, you know, and now you're getting older. How, how would that work? You can't change it a whole lot. And I'll tell you why. Because we're composed of three parts, body, soul, spirit. The body is the physical thing. And no matter how much plastic surgery, we still can't really change it that much. I've got deep set eyes. I've got dark circles under my eyes. I've had that since birth. It says something to an audience. It says, oh, he's gone through something or he's struggling or which is why I play those characters all the time. That kind of stuff you can't change. Your personality, the spirit, you can't change. It's like going to high school reunions. It's Mm -hmm. like everyone's exactly the way they were, you know, whenever you were back in school. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change that much at all. So the two primary things we base typing on, we base how we perceive people, our behaviors, personality, Mm -hmm. things we do with our behaviors, and the actual physical characteristics. So we can't change it that much. So we're kind of locked into it. Who we really are deep down, the soul, that we can change. And that does play a part of it. So that allows us to slowly change it. We can't go massive categories. 
I can't go from, I mean, I, I could. I can go from a leading man to a character man by gaining a ton of weight and whatever. But for the most part, it's not going to change too much because of our personality, mm -hmm. which is really the bulk of why we perceive people the way we perceive them. So that said, what you want to do is get to obscurity as an actor to stardom by focusing on your niche. The one thing you can do that no one else can really do. Get to that place and then you start doing whatever you want. It's like when Charlize Theron did um, Monster. Mm -hmm. Like had she started a career doing that, it would have never worked. Mm -hmm. But she played that sexy girl next door with a little bit of an edge over and over and over and over and over and finally she got well known and then she's got good, now I can do Monster and won an Academy Award. Mm -hmm. So that you can do, but you've got to get to a certain point and that's kind of fun for people once they've really gotten to know you to see you but you still got to get to that place to where they know you mm -hmm. so it's hard to go against that what about for those people those artists out there who are hyphens that they act they sing or they do stand up or mm -hmm. they act and and are musicians or singers how does that niche work for them you can use it to your advantage the interesting thing is like i've i actually teach my class not just to actors i've taught it to writers many times now mm. i've done it USC. I've done. Um, um, I've done it for agents. I've done it for doctors and lawyers. People are going to perceive you a certain way, and we've got to embrace that. How that works. When it comes to a hyphen, it's kind of interesting because your personality is still going to play into it. Because one of the interesting things about writers is writers don't get what's well, like. Well, I write this genre. Yeah, but the minute you walk in the room, we judge you as a human being. And we see this person coming in, and we go, okay, I've sized them up. It's, you know the book Blink by Malcolm Gladwell? Yes. Okay, I'm a big advocate of that book. And he talks about we have less than a second to make a 98% accurate assessment of a person based on mostly, again, physical characteristics and behavior, mm -hmm. personality. So they will do that the second you walk in the door. And if there is a totally different personality script, it doesn't feel like it connects. So there are ways to make it connect if you're a hyphenate. Mm -hmm. But you've got to be aware of how people perceive you and use that Good. to your advantage. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter what you put in there. It's all about how we perceive. It does make a little difference. Because so right now I'm growing hair out. I've had short hair forever and I've booked this does make a little bit of difference. Okay. So well, yeah, hair always makes a difference. I know. It always. When you ask a woman, they're going to yeah, say yeah. it. Oh, it would it's, not it's always. Night and day difference. Yeah, though. it does. It's, yeah. Oh, well, we yeah. find that through all the surveys and all the tests I've done, it makes a little difference. No, it makes a lot depending on. In how our heads. You, no, no, In our heads. no, no. I have to. I have to differ with you because um, I've booked a lot of work based on long hair, and then I cut my hair short. I could not get arrested. And I'll tell you why. For years. But let me tell you why. Because it either enhances your type or it distracts from your type. And if it distracts from your type, then it becomes a problem and you don't work as much. Mm. So that's what that's what I bring to this. Good. And I'm telling you, I learned this on the other side of the camera because I'm completely objective on that side. Mark, this has been joyful for me. Mm, it has been you. so cool to talk to you and and be able to share a lot of commonalities uh, about I teachers. Know, I know, I know. And also to hear your wisdom and, and all that you've learned from your career in, in all these different mediums. And I am a big fan of Mark, um, not just as an actor, but as a photographer, as, as someone who helps people with brand, as a director. Because one of the things he did in shooting me was direct me. Not pose me, but direct me. Thank you so much for joining us. And please comment below on what you learned, what spoke to you, and um, what you took away from this interview. And if you are an actor in Los Angeles, you must take Mark's class, especially if you don't know what it is that you sell. He will help you. He will navigate you and let you get focused on what it is that you sell, what your niche is. I look at the link below. We have all of Mark's information. Please run take his class run 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 like Forrest run and take that class because it will help you a lot as an actor that's all I have for you today if you loved what you saw go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get everything in real time that's it see you later